You are listening to No, You're Crazy. My name is Susan Denae. We all have crazy. What separates us is how we choose to deal with it. I'm going to be delivering engaging and actionable tools to own your crazy, treat your crazy, and turn it into your own superpower. I hope that you walk away from this show feeling the power and strength within you. And never forget to enjoy your journey because you are worth it. everyone, this is Susan Denae and welcome to the Know Your Crazy talk show where we are talking about emotional recovery in the raw, something I'm very passionate about. And as you know, if you've been listening to my show, I like to focus in on the four key areas of life. You've got your uh, health, you've got your career, uh, you've got your uh, financial, and you have relationships. Often when I bring a guest onto my show, I always ask myself, which of these four key areas is this going to bring it? Which of these four key areas is this guest going to really bring a heightened perspective, a little bit of education, something to come in and help you live a higher emotional elevated life? When I thought about those four key areas with today's guest, I honed in on relationships. Yes, we all have relationships. Uh, and and 99.9% of the time, and maybe most of you out there listening to this right now, you are thinking physical, materialistic world relationships. Me too. That, that's the majority of my day. However, there's this other thing in relationships. And the guest today is an expert in this area. And the relationships I'm talking about are the relationships that the individuals who have been dear to your heart friends, acquaintances, and they've transitioned to the other side. What is the other side? It's the side that we don't see. And sometimes we get a little hit. We get a little knowing that they're in the room, they're present with us. Well, the reason why I'm excited about today's guest is because this is what he does. Mark Anthony is a psychic explorer, also known as the psychic lawyer. He is a fourth generation psychic medium who communicates with spirits. He is an Oxford educated attorney licensed to practice law in Florida, Washington, DC, and before the United States Supreme Court. This psychic explorer travels to mystical locations in remote corners of the world to examine ancient mysteries and supernatural phenomena. Mark appears nationwide on TV and radio, including CBS TV's The Doctors, and Gaia TV's Beyond Belief with George Norrie. He is the co-host of The Psychic and the Doc on the Transformation Network. Now, he is a featured speaker at conferences, expos, and universities, which include Brown, Columbia, Harvard, and Yale. Uh, Mark Anthony is a columnist for Best Holistic Life magazine. His latest bestseller, The Afterlife Frequency, was up for a Pulitzer and ranked by prettyprogressive.com as one of the top books about faith in God. He also was honored with a recent award from the Covert for a, a Covert Gold Award for the book. Um, his other best selling books are Never Letting Go and Evidence of Eternity. Uh, so please welcome today's guest, Mark Anthony. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Susan. I really appreciate uh, you having me on. I, I've been looking forward to this. And you know, you brought up a very interesting point, which I know we're going to talk about a lot about relationships, mm -hmm. because normally when we think about relationships, we think of them in the material world, in our relationships with, you know, with our spouse, with um, parents, siblings, friends. And one of the things that, that I, I tr help people understand or try to help people understand is that when someone we love dies, our relationship does not disintegrate. Mm -hmm. Uh, what and and the objective of the journey through grief is to accept the reality of the passing and through that acceptance find inner peace with that person's death but it's much more complicated than that it's also learning that our relationship with someone transforms from one of a physical nature to one of a spiritual nature Mm -hmm. That's where somebody like me, a medium, can come in to help facilitate communication between people here and their loved ones in spirit. 
Uh, and, and that's also with grief, I've come across a lot of people who are still clinging to the physicality. For example, maybe uh, somebody has died, they don't do anything with their clothes, they leave that person's room intact, they act as if that person is still physically alive. And I do understand this, and I understand why people do that, but you're also miring, it's like you're getting stuck in the tar pit, and you're stuck in this tar pit, and it's miserable, and it's awful, and it's painful, and you have not accepted that this person is no longer living in the material world. And it's when you make that leap from the physical to understanding that your relationship is now of a spiritual nature and that you can be in contact with them, you're not going to progress. Fantastic. I, uh, wow. So one of the cool things about having you on the show today is I personally was, I was in receivership, I'll say, of your skill set and your talent. Um, I set an appointment with you. You did a reading for me. And, and what was near and dear to my heart at that time after I'd given some space was the passing of my father to COVID. Um, and, and I will say it was a fantastic session with you. I know you do thousands of them, whether, you know, I don't expect you to recall the details, but I will say we laughed a lot. He was in his, he was in rare form, his jokes, his comments. I mean, they were so dad. Uh, but one of the things that you, so the grief thing I really wanted to talk about today um, and, and because I noticed when I was going through your website and looking at things, you know, this is an area that you really help a lot of people. Uh, when, when my dad became sick with COVID and I went to the house, there was a series of events that occurred with us, like this perfect, uh, weird storm. I mean, my mom is still alive. And I walked into this home of 40 years and there were so many things. And then as circumstances would have it, the bathroom flooded as he was in the hospital on a ventilator. And, and my mom is, has early stages of dementia. So I'm gutting this house because I'm having to get it ready for a construction project. And as, I, as I'm gutting it, everything I'm touching is his and, and, or hers, right? And so, the, and so for me, how I look at things is, you know, everything is energy. And so I, I'm literally engulfed in his energy. And, and as, I, as I'm doing this, I'm well aware that the odds of him physically surviving this are slim. And as, you know, as everything transpired and, and everything went all the way through afterwards, as I reflect, you know, this house was literally almost set up for her after his passing uh, because really memory wise, the only thing she wouldn't let me uh, get rid of was his clothes. And so they were in the closet with the doors shut. But I had this uh, book I had read and it was titled Death. And ironically, it's never ironic, uh, but it, before I had, I was reading that book when all this happened. And so I did taken it with me because it was in Nebraska and I took it with me and I was reading it. And, and the author in there, uh, Yogi or somebody, I can't remember his name right now. I couldn't pronounce it even if I could remember it. But he talked about that. He talked about uh, more or less getting rid of those items to move on. And it's the same thing that you're elaborating on right now is how important it is for that process. Um, but then the other thing is embracing the other side, embracing yes. that you can now communicate with them. Uh, do you think that that is a easy thing for most folks? Like, do they have it intuitively with it, within them to know that the other presence is around? Or do you think sometimes, um, or they, they, they have that, but they're blocking it from the grief, the depression, the sadness? That, that is an extremely good and a very complex question. Because the truth of the matter is that when you die, you take you with you. Okay, people don't cease to exist. And indulge me, if you will, for, for a moment. Um, my book, The Afterlife Frequency, the subtitle is The Scientific Proof of Spiritual Contact and How That Awareness Will Change Your Life. And it differs from other books written by mediums because it's based on science. It's been endorsed by the top um, in near death experience and afterlife research scientists in the world. And I take a, a different approach. And you know, prior to, uh, to going on air, we were talking about astronauts in space. Yeah. And the thing is, my father was a NASA engineer. He had also been um, a Navy SEAL. 
And uh, my mother was a commercial illustrator and an artist. And both my parents had mediumistic abilities. This is a genetic trait that runs in my family. And I remember when I was eight years old and I was looking at the stars with my dad and we, you know, I was always why, why I was always talking about um, all, you know, asking all types of questions. And he said, Mark, there's an explanation for everything. And if you put enough research, enough funding, enough focus and dedication into studying something, you will come up with the answer and it will be based on science. He said, maybe we don't have the technology for it just yet, but we're going to develop it. He's, and, and that applies as well to spirit communication. It's not hocus pocus. It's not magic. Um, yes, there are frauds in the field and I've seen them, but there are legitimate mediums like myself and, and a number of my colleagues where we are able to energetically adjust our brainwave frequency to tune into the afterlife frequency of the other side. I know that we're coming up on a break, so I guess we can uh, continue this when we get back. Yeah, we can. How many minutes we got left here? It's probably a couple. So, because I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep going here a little bit because, oh yeah, I got some time. Okay. Uh, two so this morning, I, as I was doing my meditation, this popped in my head. And by the way, love the book, read it two times, uh, completely inhaled it. I thought it was fantastic. A uh, lot of great stuff in there. I love the areas that you go into with the uh, quantum physics, which I'm sure we're going to talk about, uh, biophotons. I mean, all that great stuff, because we are at an exciting time right now yeah. where I think the... Uh, the awareness of, of where we're going and, and where this energy is and, and, and the communicate. I mean, it, it's really, it's coming full circle and it's really an exciting time. Um, but what was coming to me this morning was the, the alpha waves and, and the beta is, what is it? The, you're going to have to help me here. Cause I got an alpha down. Yeah, we have five different types of uh, brainwave frequencies, yeah. gamma, alpha, beta, um, excuse me, gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Gamma yeah. is super high functioning. That's like, you know, you're, you're uh, um, Amy Schneider or Matt Amodio on Jeopardy. That's when your brain's running full throttle. Beta is the state we're in now. So we're able to, you know, conduct the activities of daily living. Alpha, I call that the groovy baby state because that's either meditation <laughs> or you start drifting off. Theta is deep and dreamful uh, sleep. And then uh, Delta is, um, is, very little brainwave activity, but that's when your body heals itself and generates uh, cellular growth, and that's in a deep uh, sleep state. It is on the alpha theta border where psychic and spiritual activity occur. And so when we get back from the break, we can, we can revisit that. Yeah, great, because I've got some questions around that. All right, so everyone, we will be back here shortly. More to come, more exciting conversation, more, more questions. Uh, be back. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Know Your Crazy Talk Show. I am Susan Denae. We've got special guest on the show today, Mark Anthony. Uh, we are talking about everything fun and exciting about communicating with the other side where we left off before we went to break was about the different brain waves. Where's the connection? Where's that sweet spot to feel the energy maybe to make that connection with the other side. Uh, so Mark, I'm really excited to dive into this topic with you because I have like a question. I have a question. And the question is, I, so, you know, like in uh, the, the uh, amateur phase of, of, am I connecting or not? Right. Um, you'll hear people describe it as goosebumps, or at least I have. That, that's what, okay. Oh, that's a great, yeah, that, that's they'll, good. They'll describe it as goosebumps. And so a so story for me, and then, because this will be a nice little intro into where we go with this. In about 2018, um, as much as meditation had been part of my life, I hadn't really dedicated a practice to it. And I started doing that. And a lot of stuff came out of that, um, a lot of stuff. But one of the things that I noticed with an increased dedication to meditation was I started getting a lot of vibrational hits. 
and they would come at different times. And this is where I'm going with the brain waves because the, the very first one I remember, I was on a motorcycle ride with my husband. We were over in Eastern Washington. The sun was shining. It was a beautiful day out. I was on my Multistrada. It's, it's like a Cadillac motorcycle and it was new for me. I wasn't, it wasn't a sport bike and I was just like, just enjoying, right? The heat's blowing through. I mean, it's just beautiful. I was listening because I, I listened to um, either music or a talk show and I happened to be listening um, to Esther Hicks that day with uh, Abraham. So I'm listening and this woman's in there and all of a sudden I had this amazing like vibration come through and it was just uh, the whole body tingled and I knew, but I wasn't connecting that. And this was oh, I got a couple questions here, but what I was thinking was, oh, that that's inner source is where I was at. And it just stayed there. It was one of the longest ones I ever had. And it was in this state of joy. Yeah. And, and that, that's why I wanted to ask you about, you know, and so that's my little segue into getting into the brain waves and when we experience those. Yeah, you, okay, yeah. the five different brain waves, um, gamma, beta, alpha, theta, delta, and the alpha, theta border. And we've heard throughout the years going into the alpha state, the meditative state, it's uh, when you daydream, you're in alpha and from alpha, you slip into uh, you know, sleep, which is theta. And the alpha theta border is where psychic and mediumistic activity occurs because spirits are able to see that your brainwave is, is in that frequency and they align their frequency to it. You get a frequency match. Also, the alpha state feels good. And so that's why you're saying you felt joy because it's a relaxed state. And when you're connecting with spirits, you will often get cold chills and tingles. Now, see, this is why a lot of people think that spirit communication is evil and scary. They say, mm. I walked into this place and I felt cold chills and tingles. Well, that's the same physiological response of mm. flight or fight. Because when you get scared, you get, you know, what it is, your, your nervous system's cranking up on full gear and electrical activities going <laughs> off the charts and you get cold chills and tingles. Well, that's the same sensation when spirits are communicating with you. And so therefore people jump to the conclusion and cold chills and tingles, this is fear, this is therefore bad. Plus we fear what we do not understand. And that's why spirit communication has gotten, that's one of the reasons why spirit communication has gotten a, a bad rap. And, but, but when you start working with this, as you have, you realize, okay, cold chills and tingles, electromagnetic activity. In my book, The Afterlife Frequency, I introduced the term the electromagnetic soul because this combines faith and science. Every great spiritual teacher from the sages of ancient India through Zoroaster, through Moses, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, Lao Tzu, Yogananda Paramahansa, Gandhi, a Native American spiritualist, and people who've had near-death experiences, uh, anybody that works in, with an intense um, um, spiritual connections, all describe God in terms of light. And light is the only form of electromagnetic energy visible to the human eye. Now, why am I saying all this? Mm -hmm. Well, we know that everything is composed of molecules. Okay, we all had to learn that in science class. And molecules, in turn, are composed of atoms. Atoms are composed of electrons, protons, and neutrons, which, in turn, are composed of a smaller particle, quantum. And that's where the word quantum physics comes from. You know, and in the new age and metaphysical field, people like to fling, oh, quantum, quantum. But when, you know, I, you know we, we all do this because it's, 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 it's a cool word, it's quantum. Cool. You know? Oh, man, I'm like having a totally quantum day. <laughs> All right, but but when you but but understanding it in the scientific sense is that on the subatomic level, and for the physics people watching, yes, electrons are technically a quantum because an electron is one eighteen hundredth the size of a proton. There, I said it. Okay, so we're at the we're at the quantum level. Everything is pure electromagnetic energy. So, what does that mean, Susan? That means your electromagnetic energy. Mm -hmm. so is this computer mouse that I have. So are the radio waves that this show is being broadcast on. And when you start thinking about that, it's like, wow, 
everything at the subatomic level is composed of the same building block. And that's why in the subatomic level, there's no difference between physics and biology. They're always you know, put into separate categories, but on the subatomic level, there is no distinction. And that's why I came up with the term, the electromagnetic soul, because the spirit, the who and what we are, every great spiritual teacher not only refers to God in terms of light, but as the soul, the who and what we are, our consciousness in the realm of psychology and science, pre-exists the body, comes into the body, moves on after the body dies. We know from the laws of thermodynamics and physics that energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. So when this body ceases to function, the brain, which does not create your soul, your consciousness, instead think of your brain as a computer hard drive that merely hosts this, this energy, that's what dies, and that energy remains coherent. It's like a drop of water that then plunges into the eternal sea of souls, the collective consciousness. So the term electromagnetic soul describes what we really are, which is pure consciousness, which is eternal electromagnetic energy. So that's the technical explanation for we don't die. All right, so, so when, when our, our body ceases to function, then our EMS, our electromagnetic soul, is now vibrating on a higher frequency because everything has a vibration. That's why, you know, this pen uh, isn't sentient and isn't talking to me, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, because its vibration is on a different vibration than your body and my body is, okay? Um, and the thing is, I don't want people being freaked out when they hear my book is low to quantum physics. I explain it in a way anybody can understand it because when people hear quantum physics, no, <laughs> uh, you know, um, well, I I, think, I, I, well, I think you do a fantastic job in the book with what you like, even the water drop analogy that you just gave. I mean, the book is full of that. Um, and, and the reason why I, I think that is so important because someone like myself, when I'm reading the book, um, it's, it, it's, I comprehend exactly. So you take this scientific approach, you take, you know, the, the education, obviously, and the knowledge that you have, which is so transparent when you share, uh, and, and, and you make it, you, you give these examples like the water drop. And, and so for someone like me, who, who's sitting down reading this, I immediately comprehend it. Like yeah. I, I totally, I totally get it. When you used the water drop analogy, I could just see it. And, and it was just, uh, it was just a visual. And so it was like, yeah, we return to the greater uh, collective consciousness. Uh, so, so here, so here's a question that's on my mind. Um, so when we have those, and this is probably my own, like I'm, I'm sorting this stuff out right now. So when I have a connection like that, or anybody has a connection like that, where they're having the chills that they're, they're aware that that's what's going on. Like there's a connection being made. What I had always, up until this conversation, really, and up until I read your book, and this is why it's a question of mine, I had always um, said it felt like I was connecting with my inner source, my own guidance system, like, like, like the piece of me that was the higher consciousness. However, after listening to you, reading the book, is everything, when, when you're in that state and you're having that experience, is that spirits? Talk, trying to reach you or is that a connect or is it all the same stuff do you see where i'm going with this because anything uh, I, i've I, always I, experienced is like joy and, and all of that and and i've I, and, and i'm an amateur so i haven't uh gone to the extent of you know am i getting a uh a heads up about something does that make sense yes well the thing is um there's a difference between a psychic experience and a mediumistic experience, but they all are about tuning mm. into the frequency. And what a psychic experience is, is tuning into the energy of a person, place, or thing. That's why like, uh, I've been, um, um, cons I I've consulted with law enforcement in cold cases and I'll go yeah. to a place or that type, and I can pick up uh, vibrational uh, energy echoes from what may have happened in that area. Or if you're doing a, a psychic reading on somebody, you're picking up on that person's vibration and you may pick up on medical conditions or future events, that type of thing. 
And when you're communicating with spirits, you're tuning into a higher frequency, which is the other side, what I call the afterlife frequency. And I was trying to figure out how do I explain this to people? So I was here in my office and I was working on it. And, and Susan, you know, you're a writer and, and writer's <laughs> block. All right. And it yeah, doesn't writer's yeah. block always seem to happen on the day that you've cleared the whole day just to work. <laughs> on. <laughs> I've got the whole day, no distractions. And I'm sitting here like, nada, nothing, zero. And it's like, oh, for, you know, and so I thought, all right, let me go clear my head. I'm going to go for a walk on the beach. So I, I live near the ocean and I'm heading down my driveway and all of a sudden I get the cold chills and tingles. Well, okay, I live in Florida. It was like 95 degrees outside, so I knew it wasn't the weather. And uh, But I also been doing this long enough to know that, okay, something's going on here. And I felt directed away from the beach toward a bike path near my house. So I'm walking along this bike path. It's around 11 in the morning, and I see these two objects shining in the light. And I walk up to them, and it's a nickel and a penny. And I bend over because, you know, I'm going to pick them up. And I hear my mother and my mother and father in spirit. I hear my mom say, if their head's down, it's bad luck. And I'm laughing because my mother's family was of Italian descent and Italians have a superstition for all occasions. God yeah. forbid you break a mirror. <laughs> oh my God, a black cat. Don't walk <laughs> under that ladder. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. And then I hear my dad's voice, the, the waspy Pennsylvanian, it's money, grab it. And I'm laughing <laughs> So here I am, Susan, standing there, and I, I got this nickel and this penny. I go, oh, six cents. And all of a sudden, I go, mm. six cents. I go, okay, mom and dad, what are you trying to tell me? Cold chills and tingles envelop me, like they are right now, just mm. telling, telling this. And in my mind's eye, I, I saw a vision of my dad standing in the ocean up to his waist. And, my, you know, my dad, Navy SEAL, he was a mm -hmm. diver, swimming instructor, and he's holding this blue canvas wrap. It was this old blue canvas wrap, and it had like these yellow um, plastic, you know, or rubber, you know, uh, edges to it. And I remember that when I was a kid, because we used to go, you know, riding waves on it, and we had a lot of fun. And, and, um, and all of a sudden, I hear my parents in unison say, teach people how to recognize signs from spirits, accept it as real, feel it without fear, trust um, the mm -hmm. message. And I go, yeah. raft, R-A-F-T, ran back to the computer, writer's block on, words start flowing out. And then I realized that, you know, I was struggling trying to figure out how to explain this. Well, our loved ones in spirit are capable of, of always listening, and they answered. And the best part about this, Susan, is they walked me through the whole process. Mm. It wasn't just they I received a vision. Okay, so I feel that I need to go for a walk, but then I get directed somewhere else. I see these two coins. So I, I felt the chills. I saw, so I recognized the signs from the spirits. Uh, when I picked up the coins, I heard their voices. So I accepted it as real. It's the third step. And I think you touched on this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, feel without overthinking. This is where people go wrong. That's where you hit the brick wall. Yeah. Oh, it's a coincidence. It's my imagination. I just wanted it to happen. Oh, that can't be. I'm a skeptic. Okay, yeah. No, a skeptic is open-minded. A cynic closes their mind. Okay. And so when you get past, when you, when you um, work to get rid of the overthinking and hyperanalyzing, you feel it and then you trust the message. And the raft technique applies not just to experiences like this, but to all the forms of spirit communication, perhaps you're in close proximity to a loved one who is dying. And that person may be talking about seeing deceased loved ones. Mm -hmm. Maybe you pick up on them too. This is a very, very highly reported phenomenon. Uh, the person dying is having a deathbed vision. People in close proximity who are not in imminent danger of dying are also experiencing what the dying yeah. person is. That's why it's called a shared death experience. So I explain all this. What if you have a near-death experience where you mm -hmm. die and your consciousness leaves your body, your electromagnetic soul leaves your body and then comes back? So the, the RAF technique can be used, Susan, to understand all of the different forms of spiritual contact. And so that was the T part, the trusting the message for me. Yeah. 
But I realized, and this is very typical with messages from spirits, sometimes, yeah, maybe a single message, but more often than not, the message has multiple levels of significance. And it can take hours, days, weeks, even longer to understand the full meaning of messages transmitted by spirits. And so that's one of the, the uh, teaching components of the afterlife frequency. And, and, and in the book, not only do I explain uh, the RAF technique, but I also give exercises how to help develop it. And I give examples that anyone can relate to. Because the truth is that there's nothing alien or sinister mm -hmm. about spirit communication. Everything is energy. Our loved ones have simply quantum leaped to another dimension, but from that dimension, they're able to communicate with us. And spirit communication is truly a gift, a gift from God, a gift from the divine to help us understand that the divine power that some call God exists, that heaven, the afterlife exists, that our soul, our electromagnetic soul is an immortal living being that we can communicate with these souls and that we will be reunited with them when it is our appointed time to leave this material world. These are, this is very, very important for people to understand. And this has been the, the crux of my, my life's work is to help people understand this. I think it's, um, it's very interesting to me uh... Why or, or the, um, you know, when you say people, you know, they close the door or they become analytical or that, you know, they, they close it off. And sometimes, you know, when, whenever, and I wonder how much of that has to do with uh, the influence of our environment, what, what, what we've been, you know, told or said, or who we chose to listen to really, who we chose to be influenced by. Like for me growing up, uh, there were stories about when, you know, grandma died and the clock fell off the wall exactly at 3 a.m. when grandma died, right? And, and my mom was always telling these stories. And so, and then my mom, a uh, very intuitive woman, very intuitive woman. And so my sister and I, as much as it wasn't a practice in the house, but we grew up with this, um, like, understanding that, you know, you can have communication, but it wasn't really talked about. And I think people have, I think people are, most people have had those type of stories, you know, maybe they call it a ghost story. Maybe they call it a weird occurrence. Um, and so I find it interesting. Like for me, I love it when it happens. I play with it. I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm in a phase in my life right now where I have this fantastic story. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to tell it the, uh, <laughs> that's what I get to do. Uh, so I, uh, so I, I work from home now. And one day I start getting this thought, you should go to the thrift store. I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm thinking, do I have anything to give away or, but, but it was like this, um, because I'm going to have you elaborate on the different signs that people can, and you go through this in the book, but, it, but a few of the different experiences people will have, you know, we've talked about the chills. And so this for me that day was almost like a knowing, not quite sure what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. And I didn't even go that day. I waited two days. And so finally it just kept coming go to the thrift store, go to the thrift store. Well, I had had some plans that on the upcoming weekend to take my kids downtown to a, an expo, an art exhibit. So I go into this thrift store, this danky little store. And uh, in, in one side of the building is all, uh, you know, old appliances and glassware, you know, all that good stuff. And I'm walking through, but I'm literally telling myself why you're here for a reason. Like there's some reason you're here. So I look up and I see this little mini food processor. And I, you know, it's going to help me. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy that because it's only five bucks, but that's not why I'm here. Like I knew it, like, that's not why I'm here. So I'm going through this thrift store and I'm just kind of, and I'm having this moment, like if anybody saw me doing this or was having a conversation with me right now, they'd probably be, you know, I don't know what they would think, but I'm going around and all of a sudden my eyes catch the pictures and I walk over to the pictures and I'm drawn to this picture. And it's like a, um, an outdoor uh, cafe setting. And, and it reminds me of somewhere like in a, a French uh, quarter. Um, and it's colorful and it's beautiful. And it reminds me of a picture I have at home and I'm just staring at it. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is kind of, for whatever reason, this is attracting me. And, and it's got this fantastic frame job on it. Like somebody paid some money to have this thing framed. And it's sitting in this thrift store. So I look at the price, it's like $15.99. 
I'm like, well, I don't want to pay 15 bucks for this. I don't like the frame. Like it's professionally done, but I don't like the color. So I don't want to pay 15 bucks. Right. So, but I'm like, whatever, we'll see. So I go up to the register, some teenagers work in the counter. I'm like, Hey, you want to give me a deal on the $15 picture? She's like, sure. I think she gives her like 10 bucks or something. So I go home, I set it up again, you know, thing. My husband comes home. I'm like, Oh, I got this picture, you know? And he's like, yep, another picture. I've had this thing with pictures. Um, and I go about my day. Well, we go downtown for the expo, the uh, art exhibit, and we walk in, it's a Van Gogh exhibit. And as we're sitting there looking at these beautiful, and it's this, uh, I can't remember what they call it, but it's a light show. It, it's really fantastic. And we're walking through, and my husband's watching the one where they're doing like a flash of pictures of, of paintings he'd done. And lo and behold, there it was. It was the print that I had just bought at the thrift store two days before that. And I looked at him and I go, oh my God, that's the picture. And he goes, what? I go, that's the picture in our living room. And it all came together as a Van Gogh print. And somebody had paid money to have this beautiful picture framed appropriately. You know what I mean? And right. but it was like this confirmation. And so where I'm going with this is the synchronicity and the happenings of things, because you also share about that um, in the book and, and, you know, and probably everything's a synchronicity, right? So Right. But it was that, but it was just once again, that knowledge of like, oh, that, that's really cool. That's fun. I love synchronicities. I love seeing how everything matches up. And, you know, if it's a, if it's a sign from the universe, if it's a sign from the spirits, and this is where I kind of want to get your input on this. Is it just, I'm on the right path or is it just the way energy works? All the above. Because yeah. you're on the right path and that's the way energy works and synchronicity is, you know, people say, oh, that's just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's say you're thinking about somebody that you haven't talked to in, in maybe a couple of years, and all of a sudden your phone rings and you look at it and it's like, oh my gosh, that's, yeah. that's this person. Well, that, that's not a coincidence. That person was thinking of you or you were thinking of him or her, and you're sending those electromagnetic impulses out. They pick up on it and, and they contact you. Um, I mean, my, my book is filled with, with stories of, of synchronicities, how people can be quote unquote in the right place at the right time or in the wrong place at, at the wrong time. And, um, what's also interesting is when you have these messages from spirits, it's not always immediately apparent what it means. I always say that look at a spiritual experience like a flower, blooms, blossoms, unfolds. Mm -hmm. This can take hours, weeks, even longer for the full meaning of a, of a spiritual message to make sense to you. And I, I was doing a reading for this gentleman recently. It was a telephone reading and his father's spirit came through and he and his wife were, were on the call and I kept seeing an image of two snakes. Okay, now most people aren't thrilled with snakes, but I'm thinking, all right, my interpretation is maybe these folks had a snake story, or maybe because there was two snakes, maybe it was, you know, the caduceus, the, the medical symbol with the, the two snakes mm -hmm. on it. So I'm explaining that. And he said, he goes, I understand that. He goes, I tend to think it's Native American. And I, and I said, well, you know how some psychics, everything's Native American. And I said, well, I just don't fling out Native American stuff. He said, yeah, but Mark, my father was 100% full-blooded Sioux. Mm. You know, Sioux Nation. He said, but I never met my father. He died when I was a baby. He said, so, but I don't really know what it means, but that's my feeling. So also with the raft technique, Yes, I'm the medium. I'm transmitting the message to the person. And he recognized, accepted, felt, and trusted that it had something to do with Native American symbology. Well, I said, okay, just make a note of this. Let's move on. The next day, I receive an email from him. He and his wife found a book, and they took a picture of, of the page out of the book. In the Sioux language, Sioux means two snakes. Wow. Now, I did not know this. He did not know this. And, and he was so excited because, you know, he said, wow, this is a, such a great connection from my father. And I love it when spirits will give us something that we don't understand. Um, another example of, of uh, spiritual synchronicity happened to me just the other day. I was doing a reading for, for this uh, woman. She was a scientist. So, 
she was hung up on the third part. Of not, she was not feeling. She was overthinking everything. Okay, and this is a good example of the raft technique. Recognize, accept, boom, feel. That's what people repeat to it. So during, during this, her father's spirit comes through, and I get the word spelunking. All right, spelunking, that, you know, going in caves. I mean, Susan, how many times in the last year have you used the word spelunking? Just today. Yeah, just today. Exactly. You know, and she goes, well, that doesn't make any sense. I go, well, come on. I just don't fling out a word like spelunking, hoping to get a hit. Are you sure? Well, I don't think this is it, but last night I was having dinner with some friends of mine, and we were actually talking about spelunking because they're going on a spelunking trip, and I was telling them that they're going to the same cave that my father took me to when I was a little girl, and we went spelunking. And I go, and your father is giving this to me, and you're not seeing the connection here? (laughs) Oh, oh, (laughs) And then she goes, wow. She goes, I'm really overanalyzing this, aren't I? I go, all right, so let me tell you what this means. This means that your father is around you and aware of what's happening mm-hmm. with you. Ergo, last night when you were talking with your friends about spelunking, he was. He, this drew him to you. Also, this is a multiple meaning message because it also related to a very happy memory of when you were a little girl and your dad took mm-hmm. you lunking in this very same cave that your friends are going to. So this is a shared memory. This is your dad's spirit is around you. He's aware of what's happening. And all of these are objectively verifiable facts. Ergo, not a coincidence. Yeah. And said, okay. And the thing is, and I'm not faulting her. Look, in her job as a scientist, mm. being hyper analytical and overthinking things is good. Yeah. Because, you know, the, because, and, and I'm an attorney. So I know yeah. all about overthinking things. You got to look at a situation, think of all the possibilities. But in spirit communication, you must feel. Mm. not overthink so if i get spelunking and it's like last night you were having dinner with your friends talking about spelunking go with that don't sit there and overthink 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 yeah. and, and hyperanalyze it away yeah. and that's why some people come well i never get anything it's like well yeah because your deflector shields are up let's your get the deflector shields are up barriers down so okay so i'm just going to share this with you real quick and i think i don't know if we're still going to make the break or not we may have Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. So I'll just tell you the story. So I, I'm, I, so, you know, I work out every day and, uh, you know, the playlist gets a little boring sometimes. So I, it's so I got like, you know, 300 songs on my liked songs. That's about as, as sophisticated as I get. And, and, and today I, I, I'm listening to some, to, and I listen to anything from Janis Joplin to blues to classical to this morning, however, was Metallica. And I thought that was kind of interesting based on this. I thought, I don't know why Metallica is coming to mind. The album cover, this is what I'm telling the story. Um, the album album cover is the first time I've ever noticed it. I've had this song on my playlist forever. And I look down and it's, it's kind of black. And you know what it has in the corner? And I thought that almost would be kind of a cool tattoo. But what was really cool is it was two snakes. And they were all wound up. And then I, oh. so that's what, that's why I'm sharing this story with you. It just happened oh. this morning. And I stared at that and I thought, I have never noticed this album cover before. And I, you know, is the songs blaring and it's two beautiful snakes and I'm not a snake person. It used to be a phobia. And, uh, but I was like in awe of it. And so that's how this works. And so if you're watching this show, okay, oh. you, you hearing it. So, so you turn around and are inspired to tell a story about the, two snakes. About two snakes. And this very morning, you yeah. see a Metallica album cover with two snakes on it. And what's interesting in all the stories that both the stories I told, it was the spirit of a father who came through. And it is your father who is yeah. in spirit who passed recently from yeah. COVID. He's yeah. also talking about you and dandelions and mm. the dandelions. Is there yeah. something about you and dandelions which yeah. would make sense? 
I, I just noticed a beautiful array of dandelions the last few days. I've been thinking about dandelions. There's a story I was telling my daughter that's a joke in our family. I never knew that dandelions were white and fuzzy. And then they grew into a yellow thing until years ago. And, and my family gives me a hard time about it. Then I noticed this beautiful field the other day. So dandelions have been all around me. Perfect. All right. For everybody, Susan and I, <laughs> she's in, you're in Seattle, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm in Florida. We did not talk about dandelions. <laughs> For the reading, yeah. swear to God, under oath. <laughs> and the thing is, um, like, oh my God, this is so wonderful because we are sitting here explaining about spiritual contact and how spirits are part of our daily life. All right. So, so the two snakes arced over to an experience that Susan had this morning, indicating her father's spirit is around and aware of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Then he comes through to me and fills my head full of images yep. of dandelions, which Susan yep. just explained the significance. So now, wow. Susan, Isn't that cool? We couldn't have planned this better. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I had a total hit when you said my dad was here. I got the vibration. I felt as I feel him. Yeah. But see, this is spiritual <laughs> synchronicity. Yeah, uh, totally you cool. You can't plan. You can't make these things happen. And this is how spirits can pop into our lives. Now, you know, Susan um, um, identified recognized, accepted, yeah. felt, and yeah. trusted. Yeah. So now for the benefit of all the viewers, all the listeners, you just saw Raft in action. And, and, cool. and the thing about Raft is you don't have to be a psychic or a medium to, to get these sensations uh, because we all have the same basic physiology. There's a uh, physical reason how and why we're able to connect. Some people are better at it than others. It's like some people are better swimmers, some people are better mathematicians, some people are better musicians. We're all different, uh, good at different things, but everybody is capable of sloshing around in a pool, um, you know, doing some <laughs> math, maybe uh, banging on a piano and maybe getting the tune out. The thing is, it's the same with spirit communication. Yeah. We can all engage in spirit communication and receive messages from it. And so Susan's dad popped in to let her know that... Um, Oh, 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 the, uh, the, the white fuzzy with, um, that, um, that is your dad explaining that when the dandelion dies, part of it goes on. Mm. And so when you're explaining that to your little, um, your daughter, that mm. is, is uh, part of what she needs to understand that life is an eternal cycle. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's way cool. Yeah. And I will share with you, uh, there was a years ago, there was a, um, a clarity, like a, 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 I don't know, a practice I would do where I would vision laying in a field of uh, the white fuzzies, dandelions. And as they let go into the air in my, um, in my meditation practice, I would see that as me turning over all my problems to God and, and letting everything go you know, and uh, so just full circle there. Yeah, it's fan fantastic, fantastic conversation with you. Um, God, so many things are coming through, but I had saw, what was I, what was I going to say? It just left me. It was an, oh, okay. Developing uh, this, you, you were on a, a show I was watching on your website, uh, fantastic uh, YouTube videos of all, all some interviews you've done, by the way, I, I had to walk away yesterday. I would, I would have sat there for hours, but the, um, the one they're talking about, you're, you're, uh, you were making the point that you were just elaborating on, you know, you can play a piano, you can do math equations. And I love the fact that I think they were asking you, did this, you know, does this uh, in come into the courtroom? And, and you, I, I loved it because you just said, well, it's a skill set. And right. I thought that was such a cool way to put it because it's a skill set. And so even as I was explaining to you, you know, in 2018, I started meditating and this thing started happening, um, but there was an intention and a uh, desire. It wasn't necessarily to connect at that point, but as that continued to happen for me, I just love it. I like playing with it. It's, it's really fun. It, it's really fun. Um, and so it's a skill set, though, that anybody can help enhance um, in their life and, and have this, as I like to say, it, it's fun. I enjoy it. it. It's a pleasure when it's happening. And I can usually tell for me if I've been too here real, realistic about everything because I will go days before I have that and when I am in line in alignment or I am in connection with the universe or how I like to put it I get those hits and um, it's a great barometer for how I'm doing 
Yeah, absolutely. And and this is once again with once you start working with the raft technique, it becomes mm-hmm. second nature, and yeah. you'll start to realize you know signs from spirits. Also, they can intervene to direct you away from uh, potential danger. Um, now I've got plenty of stories uh, about that in in the book, The Afterlife Frequency. And um, I I was doing an event. Um, couple years back it was in person and there was this young lady there with her mother and her grandfather said don't go to the concert and the girl looks at me and her mother looks at her and she goes oh but i'm supposed to go to this concert next week and and, and, and i said well he said don't go to the concert that something's going to happen to the car all right a year later i'm doing another public event and this woman her daughter and they said do you remember you said about this car and not to go to the concert and i go yeah i recall that she said, well, I got so freaked out, I decided not to go to the concert. You know, she's a teenager, and she called her friends and told her the psychic said that something's going to happen in the car. So the girls, were, you know, that, that did go, they said they were so panicked that they were going really slow. And they were driving up I-95 on Florida to Daytona Beach, and all of a sudden, they ran over something, and all four tires blew out in their car. <laughs> yes. And the state trooper and all that, they came and, and uh, the trooper and the tow truck uh, guy said, you know, if you if you girls weren't going 50 miles an hour, if you're going 75 or 80, you would have flipped and probably died. Wow. And there it is. Like, this was a year later that I'm hearing this, because a lot of times I don't know what the message means. I am just conveying it. Yeah. Because that is, you know, when I make a connection for someone it's not about me. It's about the the person who is receiving the message. And if people want to find out more about my book, I invite all of you to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, Please visit my website, afterlifefrequency.com. I've got some great spirit communication events coming up online um, this month. And certainly um, you'll find out about upcoming shows like the psychic and the doc and know you're crazy on the transformation network. So I invite all of you to visit my website, afterlifefrequency.com. Susan, thank you so much for having me as your guest. It, it, I oh, had a great time. And well, then well, thank, thank you, you to your dad for coming through for us. Oh, uh, I know. Yeah, folks. So, so thanks for joining us, Mark. Thanks for wrapping that up. We were running short on time. We could talk all day long, probably. Um, but check out the book, Afterlife Frequency. I read it twice. It's fantastic. Highly recommend it. And everyone have a blessed day. You have been listening to Know You're Crazy. 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 And my name is Susan Denae. We are identifying, understanding, and treating your crazy one episode at a time. Tune in to TransformationTalkRadio.com. To connect with me or Growth Spurt Your Life, please visit SusanDenae.com. That's Susan Denae, D-E-N-E-E.com.